Hey, what's up guys? You're getting Dragon here. And for today's episode on my Pay 2 Armory, I'll be covering up the British L85. More specifically, the L85A2. Or, of course, what Clovers would like to call it, Kareen's Wrath. And its military name goes by the SA-80, which is a uh, British family of the 5.56 by 45 millimeter NATO bullpups. The LD5 variant has been standard issue service rifle of the British Armed Force since 1987, and replaced the L1A1 variant of the FAL, which is only shoots in semi-automatic. Of course, the first prototype were created in 1976, with the production of the A1 variant starting in 1985 and ended in 1994. The A2 variant came, came to be as a result of a significant upgrade in the early 2000s by Heckler & Koch, which you will probably recognize that name because they're known for some of their famous um, weapon products and a fine piece of German engineering and of course in, uh, in remain service as of 2020 and probably still goes on however there is a a free variant it was first issued in 2018 with several new improvements of course the weapon was designed in in the 1970s to the 1980s it was in service in 1985 and still been used today. And of course, this was mostly due to the idea of looking for a weapon that is... Um, the British people were looking for a weapon that's uh, in a bullpup, but they had to accept the 5.56 as all every member of the NATO force forces that use, or other countries as well. As is other European um, neighbors, the f um, f French has the FAMAS, and the Austrians has the AUG. Well, um, the uh, the British are kind of a little bit slow paced, but they finally able to get their weapon. While the FAMAS and AUG were more in service in the 1970s, the L85 had finally made its service in 1985 so it's about a few a lot more a decade later but it does have some a few problems though of some of the design flaw the weapon tend to break a little bit of its furniture the hand guard the stock and sometimes the magazine does get dropped out accidentally and the reliability issue is really not the greatest so the weapon does have a lot of hiccups and probably why the, the SAS which is the British counterterrorism unit were probably favored the M4 the American M4 carbine compared to their own rifles because they want a weapon that's at least reliable and don't have all these problems during a fight hopefully all these design flaws does not reflect in payday 2 and that's quite a big, a uh, lot of history with this weapon. And we're going to cover up more as we get to the model itself. But first, here's the weapon stats. We have a magazine of 30, total of ammo of 150, rate of fire of 723 RPM, damage of 58, accuracy of 64, stability of 60, consumption of 16, fret of 12, and a reload time of 4.5 seconds, which is the second slowest reload speed for the assault rifle class. So let's actually take a much look closer look at the gun. Now you can see this is just almost typical run of the mill. Very nothing really too sci fi ish. Very standard to mill bullpup rifles. And of course the term bullpup which means that the magazine or the action of the weapon is all located behind the trigger. And the purpose of bullpup is to help you to be more uh, more comfortable in urban close quarters environments 
while still having that barrel length pretty much the same as a normal AR just reaching the same range you can probably see the barrel inside the uh, the heat sink, the vent holes as I get um, more detail with the gun and yep this can also be applied with the bayonet as well but sadly we don't have the bayonet in game you'll probably recognize the, um, it has its own optic too of the Suset scope but sadly this does not feature in the game we probably have one that's the closest but I don't think it's it now uh, as we look over the uh, the handguard you can definitely tell by what I said before where the weapon does tend to break apart this is one of the key examples there's actually two zip ties tying around the handguard through the holes and you can see it looks like it's ready to be break apart and of course it doesn't look in really good in good condition it does have a few like scratches a few marks off the the steel and I also notice the uh, the trigger guard does not connect it to bit of the pistol grip now it could be you know the whole molly in the gun like they didn't do um, there's no clipping to it they're not attaching to it on developer side or that's probably the actual gun itself of course it does come with its uh, bipod below on the under barrel it does come with a um, a grip and also a bipod attached to it sadly you can't use the bipod in game as we look over the well the left side on the uh, lower receiver we see it has the four leaf clover a lot of tally marks and a Irish flag and you're probably saying to yourself well this is not a British rifle this is a an Irish rifle well, it's a British rifle used by a Italian, uh, not Italian, uh, an Irish heister named Clover. She probably is the one that basically kept this weapon when she doing some heisting with, with her, um, mentor. About to say protege, but mentor being Hoxton, and she. Um, kept the last rifle as a reminder of her first and probably the last mentor. So that's what's all the tally marks of the highest. She probably dumped with Hoxton, or probably after she kind of split up with Hoxton. Who knows? Of course, we have our magazine re um, release button. And of course, the magazine is the same stain magazine as the M16. It does have the little blue. Um, number of 065 I have no clue what it means it could be like probably the, how the number is made due to the, the way the shape of course it does have the carry handle and just like the M16 it can be taken off to reveal a Pictini rail and you can see there's a little of a little bit of a nice little ring piece that you can put a the sling for either side as we go over to the right side well we do have a fire selector I forgot to mention so I presume A is for auto and R is for I think it's like round or like a burst or round burst I have no no idea unless there's some fancy word for R for firearms for British I have no idea and there's a fire, uh, fire selector, it's like the same thing as well. And of course, uh, with a little yellow piece, that could be uh, ambidextrous as well. It does have a dust cover, a little bit of a dust cover. That fl uh, flips a little bit open. You can actually see the, the bolt and the charging handle. And you can see the charging handle, it's like a little up shape that you can able to cock the weapon as a side like that you can actually cock the charge handle if I'm able to reach it from this side and we got more well we got more uh, more pattern uh, more marking of course uh, that should probably show the serial number UN probably UN stand for like NATO and that
large serial number and of course we have the actual name called the LD5 and this particular variant is the A2 so LD582 and the caliper fires is the 5.56 by 45 millimeter round and of course we do have two pectane rails on each side for well only for this side to mount gadgets and of course you can see the barrel inside the vent holes just you know just below the carry handle that is actually the barrel of this gun and you can see of how far a range that you can reach the barrel so you're not really losing much in terms of range with a bullpup size and another thing with the rear sight of the LD5 there's actually two sights so the big one here is mostly useful for either for long range or mostly close range these are mostly close range sights and the one at the very back here is really meant to be used for long range so you can able to flip them up you can flip them up with this little um, you can flip it up with the little notch on the right side of the carry handle to pick for your close to mid-range sadly um, this function does not feature in this game but yeah that's a lot of more details a lot more history I've, I find the LD5A2 and Payday 2 has a lot more weapon detail compared to all the other weapons in this game just uh, point that out alright let's see the attachments that you can put on this weapon of course we got the two barrels we got the prodigitous barrel sorry if I butcher it and the diminutive barrel which of course gives you more concealment while the other barrel gives you more accuracy at a cost of some concealment you can put on any barrel extension you want any boost custom as a foregrip you get the first tile of foregrip and it changed a little bit and this is more of an upgraded version more for a modern take from adding more pigtail rails more gadgets and you guys can see the um, the weapon says rifle RIS system made in USA remand before use and there's some serial numbers at the top as well and there's probably like a little bit on the side. They probably say the same thing. Oh no, it says uh, rifle 5.56, LD5, IW or W. More serial number for it. So it's uh, pretty cool. And of course, this doesn't lose any stats. Of course, you lose that thickness of the handguard. But in the favor of this. So pretty cool. Find out this the handguard was made in USA. Well, this is a British rifle. Or you can say this is a British rifle in German engineering. Of course, you can put on the gadgets. And as expected, gadgets are mounted on this side. Uh, perfectly. As for the grip, you get the delightful grip, which all oh, does increase stability. So you basically get, basically, um, like, like a sandpaper tape around the mag, so you probably have better control. Of course, you don't lose any abilities with it, so might as well put it on. Now, since it's used the same magazine as the M16, it has all the options available for the LD5. So you can put on the expert mag, which is you also get to the clover character pack which gives you increased four rounds and four stability you also have a finches mag tactical mag and of course you can fit it with a car quad sack mag so you can fit almost like an LMG wall which would be called the uh, the LD56 LSW which is more of a squad wall weapon and of course the most juicy one is the speed pull mag which is probably very beneficial to this weapon due to his reload speed but yeah these are options and of course when you put on a sight of course you lose the front post sight and the carry handle is gone 
and does reveal the Pictini rail. And like I said, the only thing that's as close to the SUSAT scope would be the mil-spec scope itself, which I try to get the best I could with the SUSAT. Oh shit, someone's called there. Uh, I'll be right back. Alright, I do apologize for the little, um, a big cut, but anyway, that's pretty much about the LD5. Quite a lot of history of this weapon in terms of its performance and history, and a lot of weapon detail in this game, which is, I think Overkill did a phenomenal work with it. But now let's see what this piece of art does in action. I'll see you at the firing range. Alright, here we are at the firing range with the LD5A2. And I do have to say, this is a really thick British rifle, especially with the hand guard with the two zip ties around it. And the iron sights are quite a little bit bulky, but they're still good enough for at medium range. So let's uh, load this thing up and hope this has no uh, malfunction. Alright, here we go. Going hot for the green. And it sounds as the audio for this um, firing quality is uh, not too bad. Pretty good, and of course, I did take a few shots. It does go over a bit, a few places, even though I have it in the center. And of course, as it goes up, it does have a little bit of vertical recoil and then goes to the left. But remember, it might have some unpredictable, un, uh, predictable recoil. So here we go for test two. Now I'm just gonna go and try to control the recoil without, you know, controlling itself. So I'll just let's see how the recoil profile goes, and. Let's get it from there. So the weapon definitely has some straight vertical as it just goes up and then hits right in the center once it reaches the max um, vertical reach. So remember that the I fired 20 rounds in full auto during the first test, where I fire a single shot for 10 rounds and then full auto 20 times, and a few round does go to the left, well this one decided to go to the right. Alright, for test number 3, this time I'll try to fire the weapon full auto, and making sure I'll try to control the recoil. So let's see if this weapon can be very controllable, even on full auto. And I'll try to get a type grouping as I can. Going hot. Well, thanks to having a much slower rate of fire, or a bit above average, this is quite manageable nonetheless. Also, the iron sights are easy enough for me to guide. After all, I do have a center, and not even the rear sights of the bulkiness never gets in my way. So the grouping, I, at least I stayed on. So this is a pretty, it's a pretty damn good rifle. Now I know I didn't show you guys my fully decked out LD5 A2, which I do apologize, which I would have gone for it, but you know, um, a few neighbor, uh, well, um, someone was at my doorbell, so uh, I didn't really show you at all. But that doesn't mean I'll show you it in action. I'll see you in a second. Here we are. Here's my fully decked out LD5 A2. Now the attachment I have on is of course the long barrel, the competitor's compensator, the foregrip, the delightful grip, the speculator sight, auto fire for custom, an accuracy boost, an LD combo, and I think that's about it. So you can see there's a lot more modern take on the weapon. So then, uh, well, 
since I can only fire four, I'll, I'll try to fire it in single shot. Sometimes you may hear it two rounds go off, but that's usually the, the the coding of the game. Since you can't even have a round burst mode in this game, which sucks. I would love to see this feature back in Payday Free, and I probably said that many times over. After all, I love. After all, I do love weapon variety. All right, going hot. Not even one of them at the triangle site. Well, the weapon definitely has um, vertical recoil. It did bounce a little bit to the right as I go file, but then it's starting to resume vertical, and it slowly climbs up, so I was able to control it and manage with the recoil. After all, I did have a lot of stability on the gun itself. And it probably helped because I also forgot to mention I have the the car quad stag mag and if you couldn't tell by the 60 rounds I'm firing. Which is almost like an LMG level with this weapon. Which you can almost transform it to the LD6 LSW. Alright, test two of course will be let the weapon do its thing without me controlling or holding down the right analog stick. Here, here we go. The bullets are coming, the bullets are coming. Okay, very similar to test 2, the vertical recoil goes a little bit up, it did bounce a little bit to the right, and then resume back vertical very slowly, and this hit the wall right here, so, it's pretty up there. Now, just in case I do out of ammo, let me just restock, after all, after all this is a really large ammo, so let's see if I need to reload. No, I don't have to, which is a good thing. Man, I wish there was an option to wait for me to check. Ah, oh, hold on. Alright, there we go. Alright, here we go. Test free. Of course, this time I will try to control the weapon in the tight grouping and full auto. Alright, here we go. Going hot. English style. It's a uh, pretty easy grouping, a lot better than the base version of course since I have all the stability. I have so much recoil control, it does. Anytime I ever want to go up, I just go down a little bit and just raise up a little bit. So it's easy enough to control the recoil on this weapon. So of course that's only if you have like all this decked out for a armor build. It's pretty good. Well, that's much for the testing. Um, now I'm going to give you guys my overall on the LD5 A2. Now I'll see you back at the lobby. Overall, the LD5 A2 is essentially a, your run of the mill assault rifle. Nothing's really special about this weapon. Anything that it can do, other sorry rifles just can do better. You can say it's just essentially a much higher rate of fire base car 4. Which the weapon has already have a lot of more attachments to go for and at the time, on, at least on the console version, is by far the only medium damage AR with a speed pull mag and a quad stag mag that has the fastest, has the highest rate of fire. If you're playing this on PC, yeah, you do have the F2000 and the TAR-21 basically outclass this weapon as a whole. And this is by no means a terrible weapon. It's just get outshined by rest of its peers. And like I said, there's no specialty with this weapon at all. With its magazine, with its barrel, with its concealment. A lot of AR could just do it better. 
as a TAR-21 has a higher rate of fire of 800 RPM and has an option to speed pull mag and has a lot of concealment. The F-2000 is already a much higher rate of fire, more accurate, and just has a faster time to kill. The L-85 just can't keep up. So, in terms of its time to kill, it definitely is a little bit on the slower side. So, I will buff its damage a bit more to keep up with the pace. But, but it's a pretty fun assault rifle to play around for crits build and armor builds. So, if you never get this um, British assault rifle any love, um, you should try it out now. And thank you for watching, everyone. Until next time, farewell, and have a wonderful day, everyone.